Eight laps of the daunting Spa Grand Prix circuit lie ahead for our intrepid adventures of the first of the Pirelli Europe West 360 Challenge races. And Paddy Shovlin is our best representative on the fifth row of the starting grid. Michael Cullen is directly behind him and Hector Alestra is alongside. We're on board with Shovlin, who's passed by the red car. Now Michael Cullen is challenging Shovlin. And as the leaders come through, you'll see him trying to slip past successfully into Lake Coombe. Down the new part of the circuit and Michael Cullen continues to make progress. This is the circuit most loved by all the Grand Prix drivers. And we're about to link back onto the old circuit, the old road circuit here at Stavolo. If you watch Michael closely, you will see that he gets sideways just now, but had the car control to keep it. I didn't, I hit the gravel and spun on the track. Paddy, uh, we know that these are sprint races, but uh, what, one and a half laps? <laughs> Less than one and a half laps, actually, but that's the way it goes. Gravel was there, there's nothing I could do, but I didn't have the ability to keep it there, so that's the way it went. Lap four of the French 360 of Francois Jacobowski is overtaken by the Spanish entries of Javier Diaz. Michael is in the top ten, and Hector Laster closing in. Dermot are in close company amongst the gentlemen further down the field. Hector is definitely in a hurry and by lap seven he's on the Dubliner's tail. He's quicker through Air Rouge and Radion and has a real chance of getting past into Le Coombe. But Michael defends the inside line and what's a bit of paint between friends, even if they're both in Ferraris. We're now approaching the bus stop. And Michael cleverly puts the Dutchman, David Hart, between him and Hector. So in the end, it's victory for Spain and Diaz. Stuart Roden is the top UK finisher in 8th place and Michael in a lower than usual ninth with Hector 11th. And Kieran and Dermot are more than pleased with 27th and 28th amongst the 33 international finishers. Now it's the second encounter of the Pirelli Europe West 360 Challenge. Michael Cowan starts in the 5th row of the grid, Hector Lester in the 6th. But Paddy Shovlin is right at the back after his first race non-finish. He doesn't intend to stay there. Up through Radion, along the long straight to Lacombe, and he takes two cars. Meanwhile, Michael Cullen is fighting amongst the leaders as we come to the bus stop. into the source at the end of the first lap and a big moment a lot of very expensive metal being damaged there Hector Lester is in a very determined mood and he's closing in on the Dubliner meanwhile Paddy Shovlin is caught up on Kieran Caulfield and he's taking no prisoners today Stop. Shovlin has passed over a dozen cars in just three quarters of a lap. We're aboard with Michael Cullen now, just coming through Le Coombe. And a car makes a mistake on the right, that could be another place for the Dubliner. A 
stop at lap two, and this is the battle up front between Frenchman Bardet and Belgian Van Kamp Hoot. Michael approaches the bus stop. And John Bosch sneaks through on the inside. That puts Michael back to sixth place. Paddy Shovelin is now lining up to try and pass the Frenchman Laberhart at Blanchimont, the most uh, frightening corner of them all. Here comes the bus stop. A beautiful manoeuvre. And Paddy goes up another place. Back at the bus stop on lap four, and it's just as hot as ever for that battle up front. Kieran Caulfield will also remember this lap. Back at the bus stop on lap six, and Michael Cullen is now in an excellent fourth place, and Hector moves up to sixth. One lap later, and we're coming through Blanchemont with Michael Cullen. Ahead is the bus stop, and Hector's right behind. The Portadown driver goes through. Two laps to go, and little does Kieran Caulfield realize that he's about to play a major role in the overall result of the race. Barney gets through, but the Dutchman doesn't. And Lester has now caught David Hart in his bid to try and get fifth place. But he has to settle for sixth. Still, he's the top Celtic finisher.